Extreme fishing is the name of the game in Michigan, where anglers battle 25 mile an hour winds and seven foot waves in an effort to bag giant smallmouth bass. These are the biggest, baddest freshwater waves. $200,000 on the line. Woo! And one pro will earn the most coveted title in the sport. Ten anglers take on wind and waves in a contest to remember. Hold on tight. The action starts now. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Yes! They call it the Motor City, a town whose rich history is forever linked to the automobile. But today the focus shifts from land to water as the best bass anglers in the world are in search of a $200,000 payday. It's the Chevy Open from Detroit, Michigan, the final stop of the 2007 Walmart FLW Tour. Hi everybody, Charlie Evans, Robbie Floyd here with you in Detroit, Michigan. The band KISS called it Detroit Rock City, and this place is about to be rocking and rolling a little bit later. The calm weather conditions aren't going to stay that way, Charlie. It's calm right now, but winds are going to pick up during the day, making these big waters of Lake St. Clair and especially Lake Erie really treacherous. That'll dictate where these guys go to fish. The home water jinx, Steve Clapper, you could throw that out the window. The man from Lima, Ohio, has really been on top of his game each day over 20 pounds. He knows these waters. He certainly does. He has seven tournament victories on Lake Erie, including the Canadian Open. He knows this lake like the back of his hand, knows how to get out even in rough conditions, knows how to catch fish with waves crashing all over his boat, and knows how to make it back in. Charlie, we have a really unique lineup here for this week. Four of our top 10 pros, Steve Clapper, Thomas Molesky, Josh Myers, Chris King, they're competing in their very first Walmart FLW Tour event. They may be fishing their first FLW Tour event, but this is not their first tournament. All these guys have competed in the BFLs and in the Strin Series against some of the top pros. But here, they're fishing against the best of the best and for the most money they've ever competed for in their lives. Steve Clapper may have more experience in open water bass fishing than anyone in this field, but even he worries about the wind. We're hearing mixed reports. Uh, if it stays down until 11, hopefully I got them by then and I, I have that, that time to uh, fight my way back. So I, said, I just pray the wind stays down. The few pros are going to the smaller Lake St. Clair to the north where the waves don't get nearly as big, including Kellogg's pro Clark Winlet. I'm actually hoping for a bunch of wind because I think it'd be better for me. I'm fishing St. Clair, at least today anyway, and uh, I think it'll hurt the guys on there if it's windy. It probably wouldn't hurt me a whole lot. So Mark Winley's going to play it safe today going to St. Clair, but all week long the big smallmouth have been coming from Lake Erie. We have Goodrich Bro Kevin Longs competed here before in the Walmart BFL. It's his first time fishing for the big buck. Hey, just made my first top 10, ready to go home and get ready to rock tomorrow. Big day tomorrow, dude. I can't believe it. I'm Last fired up. This is a great day in American history. I've been ready for this for a long time. Hey, baby. Made it. Right. <laughs> uh, come on in, guys. I'll show you around a little bit. There's the old general kitchen area. Laura spent a lot of time, my wife, on all the fish and the wallpaper. She's kind of a decorator. I can't believe you made the cut. I don't even think you could do it, but it's like, oh my gosh. Like, do you dream about this day? The weather tomorrow is supposed to absolutely be disastrous. Even though it's going to be rough tomorrow and stuff, I think guys are going to smoke them. There's big enough fish in the area I'm fishing that if they're interested in my smorgasbord that I plan to offer them, I have a shot. All right, we're going to go have some dinner and uh, settle down for the night. Look at that's my boring dinner. <laughs> Woo! Come and get it. <laughs> hey, well, thanks for joining us. Fired up to go fishing tomorrow, so we'll see you in the morning. Rock, baby. Yeah, it's going to blow uh, southwest. It's going to get pretty bad this afternoon. We're running like 42 miles. I'm just going to go catch every single bass I can catch, call every single time I can call. The second day, if it's close, then I'll really be freaking out. Wind, wind, and more wind. That's what they're concerned with, Charlie. Not only going out to their spot, but they still have to get back. Wind's supposed to pick up during the day, so that'll allow plenty of time to make it back in this rough water. 
It's the same format we've seen all season. 200 pros and then the 200 co-anglers in the back of the boat. We've paired it down to our top 10. The five fish limit is still in effect, but Charlie, to win here on these waters, you gotta have five big fish. No doubt about that. Beautiful big small mouth here. Some of them be heading up to Lake St. Clair. That smaller water up there, less wind, they'd be able to ride smoother. But the really big smallmouth live out on the big water on Lake Erie. That's where the guys that want to win this thing will hit for. Deep water, that means bigger waves. Michigan is surrounded by water. The state's coastline runs along four of the five Great Lakes. When anglers leave Elizabeth Park Marina, they turn left and go up the Detroit River. If they go to St. Clair, they take a right and head downriver to Lake Erie. And that's where Shad Skank is. He was also in the top 10 at our last event on the Potomac River. Where the water was much calmer, Charlie, but the pressure was definitely on. Chad had to make two top tens in a row just to have a shot at getting into the Force Wood Cup. He's made those two top tens, but he's still not locked in. Coming into the last two tournaments, I knew I needed to make two top tens in a row to make the championship. And so I'm not for sure it's a done deal, but it looks like you know it's a done deal. And uh, you know it might might really depend on whether I come in tenth or first too. You know it's it's going to be that that close. So that was a huge deal. Charlie, he's in that rough water. He's dealing with mites and babies for the points, but right now he may have his second keeper on the line. Yeah. Unbelievable that they can feel that bait with the water this rough bouncing up and down and still be able to feel that bait and hook up these giant smallmouth. Woo. Two in the boat, Chad. Two and a half, three pounder maybe? I think so. Good way to start his day with two in the boat. He's got his drift socks out there to make sure that boat slows down this big water. Trying to stay in position longer. That's what it's going to take here. Here's our opening round leader, Steve Clapper, a legend on these waters. He had a great first round on day one, 22 pounds. Followed that up on day two with 20 pounds and 14 ounces. But the water was calmer during that first round. Today, really challenged this guy. Clapper fishing lake, Gary, not too far offshore, it looks like. There's one. His honey holes have to be dialed in on that Lawrence GPS, Charlie. Stay pegged, baby. He's having to fight just to stand up, much less reel in the fish. Unbelievable shot we're getting here, Robbie. With this much wind action, wave action, him to be able to stay up there, maintain boat position without a rip sock, use his trolling motor, at these big small mouth. I ain't seen him yet, but... Take his time. There you go. Got All it. right. Huge fish. Thank you, Lord. Big small mouth, Robbie. James Richardson Sr. doing the net job. Good job there. Welcome to Lake Erie. <laughs> you think Richardson's learning anything in the back of that boat? Rocking and rolling. His first fish over four and a half pounds. That's the way you want to get the day started. And it's shaping up to be a wet, wild day here on Lake Erie. And it looks like the fishing will only be half of the action. Come on back for more of the Chevy Open right after this. The Chevy Open on FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always. Chevy, the official ride of FLW Outdoors. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Folgers, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. And by BP, Beyond Petroleum. We're not just seeing a great competition here in Detroit this week. This is the last event of the regular season and the home stretch in the Land of Lakes Angler of the Year race. Coming into this event, the race was led by one of the best in the sport, the 2002 winner, Jay Ellis. He's the hottest angler on the tour. Even though he didn't make the top 10 here, this event was still important for Jay Ellis. The Land of Lakes Angler of the Year title was on the line, and for Ellis, it was not a sure thing. The icing on the cake for me this year was to be to win the Angler of the Year title at the end. Jay Ellis now our tournament leader. It'll all come down to that final tournament, like it always does. And Lake Erie, I don't have much experience there. So I know that anybody could still come from behind and win this at the last tournament. Going into day one, BP Pro Shin Fukai was hot on Jay's trail to determine to overtake him. Yes! I will be happy to win Angler of the Year. 
Yellow's fished hard, but his hopes for a second Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year title were in jeopardy as both Mark Davis and Shin Fukai put on the pressure. In the cup to for Shin. He feels more happy to compete with Jay Yellis and Mark Davis. They are like superhero for him. Like a god. <laughs> Next in scales, from Tokyo, Japan, now living in Mineola, Texas, Shin Fukai. Right now, as you weigh in, you're going to be the Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year. But we'll have to wait and see what Jay Yellis does. 15 pounds, 13 ounces. A good round of applause for Shin Fukai, VP Pro. Here comes Jay Yellis. Jay needed almost 18 pounds to reclaim his lead. 18 pounds, 4 ounces. Jay Ellis takes home the title again. To win it this year is just a really a dream come true. It's awesome. Congratulations, Jay. The 2007 Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year. Shin Fukai was also looking for his second Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year title. He won back in 2004, his rookie year. The final standings were close, but no one was better than Jay Ellis for 2007. Terry Baxay finished eighth here on Lake St. Clair back in 2001. There we go. Oh, hooked up here. Oh, oh, yeah, that'll do. That'll work. Another big, beautiful St. Clair smallmouth. Down. Stay down, sweetheart. Already has one in the live well, Charlie. Stay down. You better be big enough to be worth all this effort here. <laughs> they fight hard, don't they? Yes, they are hard pullers. You can see the waves are not nearly as bad here on St. Clair as here. That'll work. Beautiful. Thank you. Look at that tube. All the way down his throat. And as you just pop it free with your finger, that's probably a, that's a three pound fish. Chubby, just like me, short and fat. That <laughs> makes two of us, Derek. Thomas Molesky and his co-angler Mike Simpson look like they're surfing on Lake Erie rather than bass fishing. These are some huge well, I think waves. They're here. Did you see his trolling motor come out of the water? There's your whole. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> Did you see him almost go into the water? It takes yeah, a yeah. lot of nerve for Molesky to stay out there. I manufacture ambulances and I fish for fun. And, and I've fortunately a very good staff that supports me and allows me to come out here a couple times a year to some of these events. He's calling this pick. one, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got oh, one stuck right here. Good one. Three keepers already in the boat. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, this one's a good one. I'm ready. The big old laser pig. No, nope, he's not that big, but he'll work. He's done well in the Walmart BFL events and the Strand Series right. events on this water. He can stand up to the best of them, Charlie. One shy of his limit. While Thomas Molesky works the deep water in big waves on Lake Erie, BF Goodrich Pro Kevin Long and his co-angler Scott Leo are fishing on Lake St. Clair. And while they do have the wind, they don't have the really big waves. Yeah, I felt really good coming into the tournament. Uh, I knew I was around a lot of fish. I knew there'd be a couple days like this. There always is around here as far as rough water conditions. And uh, pretty confident we can have a pretty good day. Uh, if we need to, we're gonna go to do a little drifting. That's a bite, I think. Dude. You got about here. Whoa. That, buddy, that, that, that. Hooked up here. That's a good one. I say it's a bite. It's a fatty, dude. He's got a bad attitude, man. There's no fish in the world stronger than these smallmouth here on Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie. Here he comes. Side fish trying to shake out that tube. He's trying to keep it in the water. Yeah. Got it. That's my boy. Nice job, dude. Fatty. Beautiful smallmouth. Right. <laughs> he wanted it. Said, Give me a bite of that tubey too. <laughs> that is fun. It's your second fish. Nearly five pounds. St. Clair special. Whoo! Fish like that will win this tournament. Man, I gotta calm down now. That kind of deal will freak you out. Hi, I'm Kevin Long. Stick around, you don't want to miss what's coming next. Welcome back to Detroit, where we're wrapping up this season and another title race, that of the Game Rookie of the Year. 
Two young guns who were traveling buddies didn't make this top 10, but they both had a terrific first year on the Walmart FLW Tour. It turned out to be a battle for the Gain Rookie of the Year title, as we see in this edition of the Fujifilm Photo Flashback. I feel like I've had a great year. I've, my rookie season, I've cashed a check in all five tournaments so far. Made the cut in two of them. If something happens and I stumble, Andy better win it. Going into this tournament, I'm second in the rookie of the year points. It'd be great to win it just because you're, you're only going to get one chance. You're only a rookie one year. The two of us both being at the one and two in the rookie of the year race is just awesome. There he is. We used to joke around back when we were younger when we first started fishing that if we could ever both make it at the same time, we could do good. Right now, everything's going according to plan. <laughs> if I can't win Rookie of the Year, I hope Andy does, because there's no person I would rather see win it than him. We just hope one of us wins it. 15, six today, 20 pounds, 10 ounces. Although neither rookie made the top 10 here in Detroit, Brian's 15 pound stringer on day two was enough to hold off his friend Andy and win the 2007 Gain Rookie of the Year title. In the final standings, Andy finishes sixth, but what a tight battle it was. Third place up to first, only separated by six points. Congratulations, Brian Thrift. He's a rookie, but boy, he didn't fish that way in 2007. Kellogg's pro Clark Winland told us he was hoping for win today. Well, he got it. It's probably blowing every bit of 20 right now, and maybe Gus higher than that. And uh, I can tell you one thing, I'm glad I'm not on Lake Erie right now, because it's bad out there. We saw how bad it's out there, but Clark, they're catching fish. Yeah. He's got one hooked up here. Two-time Land Lakes Angler of the Year, Clark Winland, throwing a spinner bait unlike the two we saw. Trying to get this one in the net. The fish finally got it. Everybody else out there throwing tube baits, looking like gold fish. Clark went it, throwing that spinner bait, looking like a minnow. Just look at the difference between where Clark Wendland is fishing and this. But Steve Clapper is in his element here on Lake Erie's Big Water. And to prove it, he held the lead the first two days. He's considered the pioneer of open water bass fishing on Lake Erie, pushing himself and his equipment to the limit in search of the big ones. And that's why Steve Clapper is the focus of today's Duracell Angler Spotlight. This is my first FLW tour event. I fished strands of the FLs, but by it coming to Lake Erie, being my favorite body of water, I decided that I'd throw my money in the pot to see if I could get in. Stay on, baby. I'm really excited about making the top 10. Fishing with this caliber of fishermen, to just be able to hold up against them is quite a feat. There he is. Rough conditions, I'm used to that. I have my boat set there up is. for rough conditions. I've had quite a bit of experience fishing in, in rough water. Woo. It's just something that we live with up here in the north because we have rough water quite often. If the wind doesn't blow, there's one. I, I feel I'm on the right fish to, to win. I'm thinking when the wind is blowing, he's on the fish to win. Charlie, he's got one on. Stay pegged, baby. Already got one nearly five pounds in the boat. Got a second one hooked up here. Anytime that Steve Clapper is in a tournament on these waters, he's a threat to win. He's already got seven VFL victories here. Get him, baby, all right. Another big smallmouth. Woo! Woo! Stay in the oh, boat. What a tongue, baby, what a tongue. <laughs> Both of his fish really good size. Another almost five pound bass. Wow. That no work. Steve Clapper fishing spots that he's fished for years and years. Throwing a bait that looks just like a goby, a bait that these smallmouth love. Got two beautiful fish in the live well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Hi, I'm Steve Clapper. Don't go away. There's more FLW outdoors to come. Welcome back to the Chevy Open. Look at the conditions on Lake Erie. The wind is howling and the waves are getting bigger and bigger. It's a very physical challenge for the anglers out here today. 
Cliff Birch and his co-angler James Dixon are toughing it out. There he is. Net. Don't know what he is, but here he comes. Good fish you got hooked up. Oh, it's a bass. It's a bass. Oh, it's a big one. Come on, please. Go oh, easy. Man, these things make you nervous. Oh, gosh. Going for the engine. That line touches the engine, it'll break off. It ain't like a flipping stick where you just jerk them in. Crank them through the guides. Here he comes. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. There we go. All Thank right. you, Lord. That's a giant. Light spinning tackle. He couldn't muscle him too much, could he? <sighs> How about that one? Four and a half pounder there. Does that work for you? Works for me. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> him too. Yeah, it'd take about five of those, wouldn't you, Cliff? That's a pretty stout bass right there. It's about as big as my daughter. Into the live well, keeper number three for National Guard Pro Clifford Perch. As the wind picks up, the waves are growing. Lake Erie is legendary for how big the waves can get. To be successful here, anglers have to use all their skills and knowledge. Keebler Pro Dave Lefebvre shares his rough water techniques with us today in this edition of Fishing 101 presented by BF Goodrich. Lake Erie is known for big smallmouth bass, but unfortunately, it's also known for big wind. And with big wind come monster waves. I'm gonna show you some things that I do to protect myself for the big run on Lake Erie. When you spear a wave on Lake Erie, usually your trolling motor is the first thing to go. So I rig it up with an extra bungee cord. If you break down on Lake Erie, an anchor is a must. Plus, it's the law. Before I launch my boat, I make sure all my bolts are tight. Rain gear is basically a fashion statement on Lake Erie. You're gonna get wet. So if you wanna fish dry, bring extra clothes. Let's go surfing. There's three different ways you can run these. You're either gonna be forced to run directly straight into them or downwind or what we always hope for is riding in the troughs. So upwind, we wanna point our boat right straight into them and hurry up and get on plane because you don't want to sit still nose first in the big waves like this. I got the motor trimmed all the way down and you go up one and down the other side. Now we're going to go downwind. Then once I get up on pad, I'm going to trim up just a little bit so that when I break over that wave like that, I gun it. And that keeps the nose of the boat up from keeping from spearing that next wave. My spot is straight to the east. The waves are coming from the south. So that's what we call riding in the trough. And there's really no trick to this as far as your motor trim position. The main thing is just keeping your eyes open. Even though you're riding in the troughs, there are those stray waves within the big waves that can get you. So the next time you're on Lake Erie or any water with big waves, make sure you prep your boat Remember my driving tips, and you'll get yourself and your boat back safe. Want more fishing secrets from Dave Lefebvre and the other FLW pros? Log on to FLWoutdoors.com to watch all of our Fishing 101 lessons. For more tips, call 866-567-1960 to subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine. Charlie, we knew the wind was going to pick up. The anglers knew the wind was going to pick up, but do you really think that they knew it was going to be this bad? Robbie, it is tough out there. Winds up to 35 miles an hour. Huge waves crashing over the boat all the time. Hard to keep your balance, hard to keep your concentration, and they got to worry about making it back in on time. One guy who it doesn't seem like it's affecting at all is Steve Clapper. Already with a limit in his boat, looking for more upgrades, Charlie. Feeding line. And he's sounding now. And I'm sorry, I thought he was going to come quicker. Got a big, strong small mouth on here. Oh, don't come up, though. Don't come up. He got meaner as he got closer. Why was he feeding line? Make sure that drag was working good. Don't want that big small mouth to pull loose. That water's staining up so bad, I can't tell. Come on. Reason why the water's getting more colors because these huge waves are crashing. Get him, baby. All right, Jim. Got him. That's four pounder, I think. That one should help. Steve's using a four-inch ISD Gobi. 
Rig it on a three quarter ounce jig head on 10 pound test line. He's using a big heavy jig head because he's fishing a rock pile that's 25 foot deep at the top of it. His six keeper of the day, will it call? Woo! That'll get rid of, them, rid of one of them little fellers. Yes, the answer's yes. Steve Clamper showing how it's done in some of the toughest conditions we've ever seen here on the Walmart FLW Tour. Much more when we come back. Detroit is a great fishing town, but there are also a couple of other things it's known for as well, like the auto industry and Motown. We asked local angler and Chevy Pro Kim Strigger to give us a tour in this edition of Around the Town, presented by the National Guard. Hi, I'm Chevy Pro Kim Stricker. We're here in the Motor City, standing in front of the majestic General Motors headquarters. We're going to explore Detroit a little bit, so let's look around. Best way to get around downtown, the people mover. Detroit's famous for that Motown sound, and this is where it all began with Barry Gordy at Pittsville, USA. Strawberries, I love strawberries. You never know what you're going to find at the Eastern Market. How much is it for one strawberry? Look at that beauty. Delicious. Pure maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, maple syrup. From Vermont or Michigan? Oh. Ah, well, I would think so. Look at the colors here. It's like a color palette. Can we fit a couple of hibiscuses in the back of the truck? It's been around for 50 years, and we specialize in peanuts. I can see I could go nuts in here. I wish my weigh-in bag weighed as much as these peanuts. This is a historic Greek town. Oopa! Several restaurants. I can smell the food right now. Excuse me, I hear that the Pegasus restaurant is a great place to eat. Can you tell me how to get there? I thought so. Thank you. Opa! It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. Mm. Oh, that good. Got another place to go, but we gotta hop in the suburban to get there. But you can visit another country just right across the river from Detroit. Canada! USA! Is the fishing any better on this Canadian side of the river? Get a sinker on there, let's rig it. I'm gonna catch one. Competition's on. You catch what I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time in the Detroit area. We'll see you at the championship. Heading home. Well, Kim Stricker enjoys the attractions on dry land. The anglers on the water have their hands full. Here's AW Pro Shad Skank making the most of a rough day on Lake Erie. Got three in the boat already. He's got one hooked up here. Using those drift socks. Slowing that boat down so that bait can get to the bottom. And a huge springer on day two, 22 pounds and 14 ounces that launched him from 14th place into the top 10. Good fish. Got it. Yeah. Hey. Keeper number four in the boat. Shad is using a brand new bait from Berkeley. It's called a Berkeley Gulf Alive Leech. He's fishing it with four carbon line with a half ounce weight Rick drop shot. And that keeps that leech up above the bottom, above the weight right in the strike zone for the fish and also gives it a real live action where it's a lot of movement right there in front of those fish's face. They can't stand it and they grab it. That'll be his fourth keeper, three pounds, about three and a half pounds for Shad Skank. He's looking for one more to complete his limit. Clark Winlet through the spinner, babe, but other than that, all we've seen has been gobies and leeches. Seems to be working. Now we go to Yamaha Pro Terry Baxter. I got one. Hooked up here. Yeah, please. Oh gosh. How big is that? How big is he? Out of the drift sock. Uh oh. That could be trouble. Here he comes. Here he comes. Beautiful big smallmouth down that clear water. Reeling backwards to give him plenty of room. Don't want to pull loose. Terry Fish on St. Clair. Oh! Thank you, partner. Woo! Good lord, I can't believe how hard they pull. These are big, strong smallmouth, Robbie. Look at that tube all the way down his tummy. He's fishing in St. Clair, but that's a nice big fish there, Charlie. His seventh of the day. Clipper Birch is on the move on Lake Erie. Looks like he's had enough of the rough water. But most of the field is still out there, and we'll see more wild big water action when FLW Outdoors continues. Giant smallmouth bass is going full speed ahead. Conditions along the waterfront are calm, but out on Lake Erie, it's another story. Josh Myers and his co-angler Ben Felton are riding the waves and finding the fish in rough water. There he is. Got one hooked up here. He's 
already got four in the boat right now. There's a real good shot of that drift sock. Looks like a big blue parachute trailing out in front of that boat. Slows the boat down so we can get that bait down to the bottom in front of the fish. Beautiful fish here. Josh, yes. a local angler, but from the other side of the border, a Canadian in the field. He's got a limit in the boat now. Keeper number five. So the wind blows the boat, but it can't blow it as fast because that sock's kind of dragging, right? Slows the boat down, which is critical out here in this much wind. That's five. Now back to Kevin Long on Lake St. Clair, where the waves are calmer, but the wind is blowing hard. He has picked up. He's got his sock out also. Already got a limit in the boat. Hooked up again. Coming up. It's a bass. These guys want to keep these small mouths down in the water. He didn't they come are up. acrobats up in the he air. Didn't let him. They throw that thing. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Normally you hear the guys talking about how they don't, can't get caught up in timber. You might get caught up in that drift sock. It's not a giant, but he'll call. He thinks this will help if you can get him in the boat. It'll show. So make sure he doesn't get that fish into the drift sock. Got two He's socks safe. out. Okay, scoop him up, brother. Got it. Nice work. He's not nearly as big as I thought, but he's bigger than something in the old box. You'll be able to call with that one. He's bigger than something in the box. Call is a very key word. Out with a small one, in with a bigger one. Trevor Jankus is a champion Walmart co-angler who went over to the pro side for this event on his home water. And he's ready to make his mark in the big leagues. Usually I fish the FLW Tour as a co-angler. Your champion, Trevor Jenks. You always fish all year long with the co-angler side. You said, to come here, I'm going to the pro side. Take the gamble. I feel comfortable switching to the boater side, especially in this tournament, because we're fishing for small mouse. That's what I love to do. I mean, that didn't really matter who I was fishing against, or the Jay Ellis's and the Larry Nixon's and all them guys, because I know how to catch them out here, and it's my style. I mean, I've had great people to travel with and to learn from. The Chip Harrisons, the Kevin Bidens, guys who go around the country and fish for a living and are good at it. I'm pretty excited to make the top 10 in this one on my first one. 19-7, second place now, 38 pounds. Once you make the top 10, you're fishing against 10 guys for 200 grand. You ain't got no worries. Let's go, get it done, boys. Me to win this tournament would be good times. 200,000. Never had that much money in my life. He has a 1 in 10 chance of taking home 200K this weekend, Charlie. He did a great job in his first outing from the front of the boat. He's already got four in the boat, looking for number five. Got him hooked up here. On the Strength Series title on the Detroit River back in 2004. He knows this water. Big, strong smallmouth. It's a big difference being in the back of the boat all the time and running the boat, being in control of your destiny too, isn't it? But it looks like his destiny says, I've got a limit, now it's time to comb. And now from the back of the boat, the co-angler, Drew Montgomery, while he's netting that fish, a smallmouth grabbed his too. He's got one picked up if he can get him in the boat. Hi, I'm Trevor Jenkins. We're out here on Lake Erie smashing great big smallmouths. Don't go away. Have you played our fantasy fishing challenge? Dale Horaz of Carterville, Illinois, picked the top five anglers in our last event and won $5,000. Don't forget to log on to FLWoutdoors.com for tournament updates and exciting news about the 2008 Fantasy Fishing Challenge. You can also visit the website to vote for the Eagle Claw Hook Set Award. The winner from our last event on the Potomac is Jack Wade. He receives a $500 Walmart shopping card presented by Eagle Claw. Terry Maxey hasn't let the rough water throw him off his game. He's landed seven keepers so far. And so has his co-angler, Ken Murphy, from the back of the boat. Here's a look at number seven coming on board. Ooh. Took a while, but See, he got it. See, Terry's fishing. <laughs> Good job. Ken led the first two days of our last event on the Potomac River, but day three, ugly. He finished in ninth place. He could win here and be some sweet redemption after that loss on the Potomac. A little different presentation for Terry Baxay. A seven in the boat, now throwing a jerk bait. He's got one hooked up. About jerked him in the water. Oh yeah, baby, sweetheart. Stay down. 
Stay down. He's gonna call it anything. Honey, baby, sweetheart, no, darling. No, 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 is that the new word of the year? I gotta use that. The net daddy. Who's the net daddy? <laughs> oh, baby cakes. Biting a bug. It's time to fire them up, Charlie. You gotta head back. It takes a while to get out there, but the guys talk about it. It may be even rougher heading back if you're on the area. Some big waves to back all the way back in. Sometimes it can take a long time to get back. If they're not back in on time, one hour per minute, or each minute you're late to check in, so they gotta make sure they leave in time to get back. These may be the biggest waves we've ever seen in a Walmart FLW Tour event, but legendary Ranger Boats founder, Boris Del Wood, he's seen it all, as we hear in today's edition of FLW Fish Tales, presented by Yamaha. A lot of funny things happen while you're fishing. There was a group of people in a boat floating down Buffalo River, and there was an old dead tree leaning down in the water from up on the shoreline, and a squirrel was walking down the old dead log. And he went down to the edge of the water, and there was a nut laying in the edge of the water. And so the squirrel picked the nut up, and just about the time he did, a big bass came up out of the water and grabbed the squirrel. And we thought it was the most astounding thing that we'd ever seen and the waves died on the water and so forth, and we were just sort of sitting there contemplating what we'd witnessed. And the water began to move again, and the big bass brought another nut up and laid on the log. <laughs> Thanks, Lawrence. It has to be a relief for these anglers to get back to the marina. Some avoided the biggest waves by staying on Lake St. Clair, like Kevin Long. But did he also avoid the big fish? Overall, kind of saved the day at the end of the day there. Caught a nice one and called a couple times. And uh, so made a good adjustment. Um, got a better game plan for tomorrow. I'm excited. I don't think I'm going to be in contention. Uh, depends how everybody else did, of course. But, uh, you know, hard to complain. That's the, best, that's the best I could do and fish the best I knew how to do. And that's what we ended up with. No matter how they did today, tomorrow is another chance to catch up or fall behind. It's time to head back to the scales and see where they stand. The anglers finally get to set foot on solid ground. We're going to the weigh-in next. You're looking at Detroit's Cobo Center, site of the final Chevy Open weigh-ins. The anglers and fans can hardly wait to see who found the big bass. Charlie Evans is on stage, and the weigh-in is underway. Kellogg's pro Clark Winland is first up. With 15 pounds, 7 ounces, he knows he'll have some catching up to do tomorrow. Next to the scales, Kevin Long. Kevin Long has five fish here that we have a total of 18 pounds, 13 ounces, a new leader, Kevin Long. Kevin Long raises the bar. Now it's up to the other anchors to beat him. His wife, Laura, couldn't be happier. Canadian Josh Myers comes up over a pound and a half short. Today, he can't top Kevin Long. But Trevor Jenkins can. His five bass limit gives him a pound and a half lead. And for now, this former co-angler champion is leading on the pro side. Clifford first battled the weather today. He lost. With less than 14 pounds in the bag, he's facing a tough battle tomorrow. And now it's Terry Baxay's time to shine. Got five in the bag here, and the weight of these five, 20 pounds, five ounces, a new leader. Terry Baxay pushes the bar over the 20 pound mark. His son Christopher is here to cheer him on. Thomas Molesky found the fish. It's not enough to catch Terry Baxay, but he puts himself in striking distance for tomorrow. Chad Skank had a tough day with just over 16 pounds. He'll have a tough one tomorrow too. He's got some catching up to do. Finally, the opening round leader, Steve Clapper. Can he keep his momentum going? He got five fish today, and the weight for today. 23 pounds, three ounces, back in the lead once again. Wow, Steve Clapper looks unstoppable. For three days in a row, the rest of the field has been playing catch up, and now he's pulled ahead of them once again. Looking at the standing, Steve Clapper has a three pound advantage over Terry Baxay, but he's not the only one that has to make up 
up some ground. This has been the Steve Clapper Show. Back inside, nine of the co-anglers have weighed in. Ken Murphy is the man to beat. Day two leader James Richardson Sr. is the last to the scales. Looking for 18-13 for James Richardson and the weight today. 12 pounds, 14 ounces, good enough for fifth place, but we have a champion, Ken Murphy. And he does it. The victory he couldn't catch on the Potomac. Ken Murphy finally lands it here in Detroit. With two other co-angler top ten finishes this year, the third time is a charm for Ken Murphy. This moment has been a long time coming for him. Ken Murphy with his first victory takes home the $40,000 check on one of the most difficult days at the office you could ever imagine. All of the co-anglers can head home tonight proud of their achievements with a nice paycheck in their pocket. But for the pros, there's one last chance, a make or break day that will determine who goes home the champion. We'll have more of FLW Outdoors when we come back. The Chevy Open on FLW Outdoors is brought to you by National Guard, you can. Keebler, uncommonly made, uncommonly good. Slim Jim, snap into a Slim Jim. Pedigree, dogs rule. Evan Rudy Tech, spend your time on the water. And by Chevy, the official ride of FLW Outdoors. Three punishing days of Great Lakes wind and waves are behind them. But for the top 10 pros left in the Chevy Open, Pressure has ratcheted up a few notches. There'll be no more chances, no more time for mistakes. There's just one more day on the water and one check for $200,000 waiting for the winner. In second place is Terry Backsay. He's definitely within striking distance. On day three, he left behind the rough waters of Lake Erie and enjoyed the relatively calm waters of Lake Sinclair. He had no trouble finding his limit. But the trophy smallmouth are in Lake Erie. His decision to pass him up may come back to haunt him. That's it. In practice, we had enough big fish that it's possible to catch 25 pounds. You know, Steve has to catch him too. So if he stumbles a little bit, maybe it'll happen. So, I mean, I have my fingers crossed and everything goes well. We're going to see what happens. Mother Nature's painting a very different picture for the final day. The winds are forecast to drop, which means the waves could be down. That's good news for BF Goodrich pro Kevin Long, who came up short on day three. He didn't have to fight big waves on Lake St. Clair, but he landed a mixed bag of bass. After a big catch early in the day, the bites got smaller. He's never made it this far in a Walmart FLW Tour event before, and on his home water, he may still have a few tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, this is my first top 10, and surprisingly, I haven't been nervous the whole time. I've been ready for it for quite a while. I'm just really excited to be here, but uh, I'm just going to go out and work hard and feel great. 10 pros take to the water this morning. Nine of them are chasing the same man, Steve Clapper. No one has ever led a Walmart FLW Tour event wire to wire. Will he be the first? He's a living legend, a man who made a name for himself, braving the conditions no one else would dare. This is his lake. For three days, he's been untouchable. But the conditions have been punishing. After a brutal day three, can he hang on for day four? It was, uh, it was tiring, but uh, I don't know. I feel pretty good. I have a few ibuprofen last night and uh, got a few hours sleep. I think I can do it for one more day, at least uh, stay awake. Everything is certain as we look toward the final day of this Chevy Open. Whatever happens, it'll be some of the greatest fishing action we've seen all year. This immense fishery is loaded with huge, hard-fighting smallmouth bass. And these 10 anglers are going after them flat out, right until the end. Each one of them hoping to claim their share of the one and a half million dollar purse. Join us next time for the conclusion of the 2007 Chevy Open from the Detroit River. And log on to FLWOutdoors.com for complete tournament coverage and live webcast. For more fishing action, call 866-567-1960 to subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine. For Charlie Evans, I'm Robbie Floyd. We'll see you next week here on FLW Outdoors. The final day of the Chevy Open dawns. 
And all eyes are on a legendary Great Lakes angler who has dominated from day one. He used high seas to his advantage, but with calmer water today, the playing field is leveling out. Woo! Look at that one! Now, nine other pros are chasing big, smallmouth bass. Yes! Angling for the lead. <laughs> and a huge paycheck. Woo! $200,000. Yes! That's what I'm talking about! Yes! The Chevy World Headquarters stand guard to not only the automotive capital of the world, but the gateway to one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries on the planet. Mother Nature hasn't always been kind to these anglers, but no matter what she throws at them today, one of them could walk away $200,000 richer. It's the Chevy Open from Detroit, Michigan, the final round of the 2007 Walmart FLW Tour. You could not ask for more perfect conditions than we have right here today in Detroit, Michigan. Hi, everyone. Robbie Floyd along with Charlie Evans and Steve Clapper. I don't know that you could have a much more dominating performance than we've seen out of him this week. In three days of competition, he's averaged over 22 pounds a day. 23 pounds and three ounces yesterday under some really tough conditions. Look for him to crack a really big bag out there today. He's led from wire to wire. If he can wrap this thing up, he'll have his biggest win of his career. $35,000 is the most he's ever won in one event before. If he hangs on here, he'll pick up $200,000 and lift his career to an entire new level. The separation between first and fifth place is definitely not insurmountable. When you see 23-pound sacks, you know that there are big fish in the neighborhood. Yamaha Pro Terry Baxi is less than three pounds out of the lead. Hopefully today with a little bit better weather, be able to run around a little bit more and maybe get some of the bigger bites. So I'm, I'm excited. I just love catching smallmouth, so this is a bonus. With wind 5 to 10 miles an hour instead of yesterday's 20 to 30, light wind means smaller waves. And even the locals like Kevin Long are relieved. They're calling for a light wind, which is how I like to fish this lake. And I have a feeling everybody's going to catch them, but I'm really confident when it gets uh, calm out, it's, it can be pretty fun. You hear that adage, Charlie, it's a new day. Well, it's definitely a totally different day than it was yesterday. It's going to be a slugfest out there today. Anglers will be able to move around, get to the spots they want to fish, and stay on them. They're really going to hammer them today. All those honey holes, Charlie, that they couldn't get to yesterday, they can today, and who knows how many that are. There's tons of fish in these spots. Lake Erie is world famous for its big smallmouth, and today they'll be able to get to them. You don't see many flat days like this out here, Robbie. These guys are going to get to their fish, and they're going to work on them today. The pros have a lot of water to work with here. We are surrounded by it, literally in the heart of the Great Lakes. Anglers in this event will be focusing on two lakes, Charlie, Lake Erie to the south and Lake St. Clair to the north. The pros take off from Elizabeth Park Marina just outside downtown Detroit. Here's Thomas Molesky, who's starting nearly four pounds out of the lead. And look at that water. It's a far cry from what we saw yesterday. Yesterday was absolutely unbelievable. Huge waves out there. Anglers fighting to stay in the boat, having to really maneuver very slow to get from spot to spot. We had some big, big water out there. Very exciting. Oh, Charlie, the anglers are one thing, but think of the cameramen that are having to shoot these anglers. My hat goes off to them for sticking with these guys, never left their sight, and look at how big those waves were. Today, a different story. Here's Molesky looking for that first fish, and it looks like he's got it on already. Good, strong hook set. Use a spinning rod real light line. Today, they'll have to net their own fish. Good thing it is, platter. Beautiful big small man. That makes it a lot tougher. Got it. Oh, great way to start the day. Didn't take too what? long for Thomas Molesky. About a four and a half pounder looks like. That's the kind of fish that can really move you up in the leaderboard. Number one, about four pounds. Uh, I think it's bigger than that, but there are literally millions of these smallmouth here on Lake Erie that size. What a great, great place to go fishing. Without the big waves of yesterday, Shadskeg is going back to the game plan. We can feel the allure a lot better today. Yesterday, we got a half ounce on. We're fishing at 27 foot of water. Yesterday, I went to three quarter and still couldn't feel on their fish. Nope. You don't want to be able to feel the bottom just like I am right now. So when it gets rough, that's when you're going to get bit. If it's just a smooth bottom, you know, they don't like that. The gobies love it where it's rough, and then the smallmouth love the gobies. Everybody. Oh, good hook set. 
I like how he felt it, reeled down, and snapped. Come on, Mal. Got a head shake. He knows this loose not a sheephead or a grom. He'll just pull steady, smallmouth, ripping and tearing. Trying to fight you. And it is beautiful smallmouth. Uh oh, don't get him in the net, Chad. Need a longer left arm. Ah. Woo! How about that? That's what we're looking for, isn't it? Right there. Same place. We caught him the day before. Woo! That's what we're after. Another beautiful <laughs> smallmouth caught this morning. It's going to be a great day. So special holes, Charlie. They're just stacked on each other. Look at this. He had it in, had it out. <laughs> it out. He's lucky to get this fish in the boat. Great job of fishing. Not a great net job, I said. <laughs> Woo! Now that is exciting. I don't care if you're sitting at home on the couch. That's exciting. <laughs> a little too exciting for Woo! Chad, though. Man. Pulled hard. These giant smallmouth are really strong. Winds are calm and the fish are biting. We've already seen some big catches in a couple of those. Good with the lead in anyone's hand. MLW Outdoors continues. The Chevy Open on MLW Outdoors is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices, always. Chevy, the official ride of MLW Outdoors. Evan Rudy Tech, spend your time on the water. M&M's, chocolate is better in color. BP, Beyond Petroleum. And by National Guard, you can. There's no question Steve Clapper is the man to beat at the Chevy Open. Since day one, he's shown why he's a legend on these waters. Day one, 22 pound sack, Charlie. Day one leader. Day two, a 20 pound, 14 ounce sack. Day three, when it's rougher, a 23 3. He could be the first wire to wire winner in Walmart FLW he Tour is. history. He's picking up where he left off, Charlie. This could be his third keeper already. He's off to a great start today, Robbie. Two good keepers in the boat already. Here's number three heading toward the boat. This is his first Walmart Jeez, FLW better. Tour event. He can leave this thing wire to wire, take home that $200,000 first place prize. That'll be more money than he's won in all of his other tournaments combined. He's definitely not forcing this fish around, Charlie. He's taking his time. Those are dollar bills he's trying to put in the net. He'll take his time with oh, this yeah. big fish. He's got to get him in. But if he can get him in the boat yesterday with that big rough water, today with the calm water should be a problem. Get in there, all right. Woo! Three good keepers in the boat now for Steve Clapper. That's better. There's big smallmouth all over Lake Erie, but Steve Clapper knows where the giants live. And a good indication is where his biggest honey hole is. You go there first and try and catch the big ones. And while Clapper works in familiar territory on Lake Erie, a few anglers have gone north to Lake St. Clair, including BF Goodrich bro Kevin Long. He started the day in the middle of the pack, but he's been working hard to move up. What a day he's had so far. Already got a limit in the boat this morning. Now he can spend the rest of the day trying to catch bigger smallmouth and get rid of the smaller ones. He is really making a move on the leaderboard. They're a lot better than yesterday, man. There's one. You got another one hooked up here. What a day he's having. It almost like I gave you a surprise. And I thought he was like a two pounder at first. He's jumping out of the waves. This fish is bigger than two pounds. He's making sure he gets it in the boat. He caught a limit with that wacky worm. Now he switched to a tube, trying to catch some bigger fish. Bigger bait, bigger fish, Charlie? Certainly a bigger profile, and these smallmouth love gobies. That's what it looks like. Nice chunk, dude. Take it. Started the day nearly five pounds behind Steve Clapper. I think he's made up that ground. I think he's a little better than something in there. He's calling, that means he's really trying to put a move on. Canadian Josh Myers is fishing his home water here. Oh, oh well, there we go. He's hooked up again, he's already got two in the boat. There we go. He started the day just six pounds out of the lead. If he can get this one in, he'll be making a move toward the leaders. The other guys are catching them too, Charlie. Come in the net. Good fish. Pull it back. Yes. Got it. Yes. Looks like about a three and a half pounder, but if he's really wanting to catch up, he's got to catch bigger fish than this. That's what we're looking for right there. Barely have him on the two. He's, he's a good three and a half pounder. 
That would be good any other day. Today, you're going to need about a five-pound average. You're going to make ground up on Steve Clapper. He may be on his way to making history. The Walmart FLW Tour continues right after this. Welcome back to the Chevy Open, where these northern waters are teeming with giant smallmouth. Kellogg's Pro Clark Winland's Comfort Zone is fishing the reservoirs of the south. But to fish these big waters, that's a different challenge. There's places I feel like anybody can do well, but up here it takes some experience with these waters. A lot of guys are intimidated by it. It's huge. I mean, Lake Erie is like the ocean. You get out there just a few miles from shore and you can't see any land anymore. And, um, you know, it's just something that's different that we don't have to contend with very often. And so it takes experience to do well. That may be why he stayed on Lake St. Clair the whole week. Got one hooked up here, but he made the top 10 doing that. His home water, Lake Travis, down in Austin, Texas. But you can take 100 Lake Travises, put them in Lake Erie, and still have room to spare. <laughs> you can put 1,000 Lake Travises in Lake Erie. Probably so. This is Clark's 20th top 10, though. No matter where he's at, he keeps producing. It is surprising, though, don't you think, that on a calm day, he doesn't go for the big, big fish Perry. I really do think that he feels more comfortable up on Lake St. Clair, where you can see the shore on both sides. He didn't want to get out there in that ocean. The two-time Land O'Lakes Angler of the Year with his fourth keeper in the boat. Thomas Molesky's fishing his very first Walmart FLW Tour event. He is turning on the heat this morning. What a day he's having. 13 keepers so far, and three of those over four pounds. He's making a move. A great performance by Molesky, and he's not even a full-time fisherman. But this week, he couldn't pass up the chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the sport here on his home water. And he's the focus of today's Duracell Angler Spotlight. I've fished up here for 20 years. Know the water very well from Anchor Bay all the way to Buffalo, New York. Yeah, that's a good one. I was born here nearby in Detroit and uh, used to fish out here as a kid. I ended up in Indiana, and I am a business owner down there now. Uh, manufacture ambulances, there's a bike. Because of my line of work, I can't fish the full tour. I fish for fun. I expect that at least half of the top 10 would be what we call locals. 19-7, second place now, 38 pounds. Just the hundreds of GPS waypoints that the locals have for the tour pros come in here and they've got, you know, seven, 10 days to try to bridge that gap. And it's quite a gap. Oh. It's like an ocean out there. That's very dangerous and it takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice. Oh. It's the ultimate exciting thing to go play with the pros and beat them. Heads up. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> you are one of the pros and he knows this place like the back of his hand. I mean, 13 keepers already this morning, Charlie. And is this number 14? He's hooked up again. Feels like a good one. Sitting right on top of that hump. Look at his electronics, make sure he's right in the right position. Exactly right. You gotta know where to fish. Too much water to be out there just guessing. Start the day in fourth place, Charlie. I think he's definitely moved up. Is this his fourth four pounder? It is. One more like that, and he can give Steve Clapper a run for his money. What do you think, Charlie? Though he's gaining ground, but it seems to be ounces. He's kind of treading water right now. Exactly right. Steve Clapper's catching big fish too. Unless he talked about beating the other pros that came in from out of town. But he's really got to worry about is Steve Clapper, the hometown favorite. Everyone is gunning for clap on, clap off Steve Clapper, and right now he is on, Charlie. This guy, he's untouchable at series. <laughs> Already got a limit in the live wheel. Hooked up again. They pegged this time now. I start my hook. Oh. He wants it to Ooh, stay help. buttoned up. I don't think he's had too many problems uh, losing fish this week. Hear the drag. Line. Yep, pull that line again. Make sure that big, strong, small mouth doesn't pull off. Got him in the net. Along with one of his other rods. Oh, no, that could be trouble. You know I am all tangled up. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a co angler back there helping him out today. He'll help. He'll be able to call with that one. He'll help. Not a big one, but an increase. He's already had three days where he's weighed over 20 pounds a day, leading wire to wire in this tournament. He's heading toward that 20 pound mark again today. The other nine anglers are catching nice fish, but Steve Clapper's not giving up any ground. The Chevy Open continues right here on FLW Outdoors. 
$200,000 on the line today. The anglers are seeing plenty of green in the water here. A lot of money and a lot of bass. Kevin Long is on a hot streak right now. He's caught 12 keepers so far today and keeps upgrading with every single fish. But there's a reason he knows just exactly where to look for. This is uh, my home lake, Lake St. Clair. I've been a fishing guide on it for 10 years. Pretty comfortable on the lake. Um, we go to Lake Erie once in a while, but uh, Lake St. Clair is home. You know, we've been there for a while. Charlie, we often hear about that hometown curse, but we're seeing the opposite happen here. Seven of the top 10 call these waters home. Exactly right, Robbie. Tom Leske said it best when he said it takes years and years and years of experience to find out all the great spots there are on these bodies of water. Kevin Long knows every single rock pile on Lake St. Clair. He knows which ones hold the quality fish. This is a quality fish right here. This is another four pounder we've seen today. Oh man, that's a toad as well. Unbelievable. Dude, I didn't give him that much credit for being that big when he was fighting. He's a chunk. Beautiful fish. I think they were in a frog pond as many toads as we've seen. He's a pegly, pegly wiggly. <laughs> Beautiful big smallmouth. He'll upgrade with that one. That's for sure. Another big bass in the boat for Kevin Long. This area has lived up to its reputation as a hot spot for trophy smallmouth. We've seen them coming across the scales all week, but only one of them was big enough to win the title of Snickers Big Bass. And that honor went to Banana Boat Pro Kevin Vida, who caught this five pound, 13 ounce toad on day two. It netted him a hefty $1,750 check from Snickers. Kevin Vida has a long string of BFL and Strint Series victories on these waters, so he knows a few things about how to catch his big smallmouth. He tells us what he looks for in a fishing rod in this edition of Fishing 101, presented by BF Goodrich. When choosing a new rod, there's a few key features that you need to look for that will help you put more fish in the boat. You need to choose a rod that you're comfortable fishing, and the length is the first thing to look for. I personally like seven foot rods and six foot six rods for most of my fishing because it's comfortable for me to fish, and that's the most important thing when you're out on the water for eight hours a day. I use a medium heavy action for the majority of my fishing. I am a firm believer that you can't land a fish if you don't drive the hook home. So I like to use a rod with a lot of backbone. You can see in this rod right here that the tip bends at the upper quarter of the rod. This gives me this whole section of rod to set the hook in a fish. Another thing to look for is the graphite composite of the rod. I look for a high modulus graphite, which means more graphite fibers in the rod. It makes it lighter and more sensitive when you're fishing allowing you to feel the bite a little easier than you could with, say, a fiberglass rod. That's a nice fish. So when choosing that new rod, choose a length that you are comfortable with, a little more backbone than you are used to, and the highest modulus graphite that you can afford. And I guarantee you will land more fish. Want more fishing secrets from Kevin Vida and other FLW pros? Log on to FLWoutdoors.com to watch all of our Fishing 101 lessons. For more tips, call 866-567-1960 to subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine. Chad Skank started the day with an early keeper, and he hasn't stopped catching them. That's an understatement. He's caught Woo! 17 so. keepers so Look far today. One. What a day he's having. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Can you believe that? I can fish all week and not catch 17 keepers. That's a good trip for anybody. Chad's not finished yet. He's got another one hooked up here. Uh, it loosens up the drag to make sure that fish doesn't pull off. These are strong smallmouth. Get the net ready. Feels pretty good. There we go. Woo! How about that? That one go five, four and a half, huh? That's a beautiful big fish. That's his 18th keeper now. Woo -woo. Moving around a good thing or what? Huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is an amazing way to end the regular season. Yesterday we had massive waves. This morning we're seeing unbelievable numbers of keepers. What will happen next? Stay with us and find out. Welcome back to the Wolf.
Walmart FLW Tour in Detroit, Michigan. If there's one thing we can say about this event, is that knowledge is power. And Steve Clapper has more local knowledge here than anyone else in the field. Those years of experience on Lake Erie are really paying off for Steve Clapper. He had a three pound lead, Charlie, coming into this final day and he doesn't want to give it up. He knows every spot on Lake Erie, knows how to hold on those areas, right over top of those little humps that holds those big, huge smallmouth, and he's tearing them up today. I mean, he just doesn't know how to back it down on these waters, does he? Oh, man, right when I want to He move. knows this he's lake like big, the back yeah. of his hand. Got lots of years of experience, he's been very successful, oh, anyway. but never before has he been in a $1.5 million dollar event where the first place is $200,000. I know that's gonna be in the back of his mind this whole time. Just one more day and I'll be the champion. And how about him standing up to the pressure? I mean, he just keeps catching big fish, big fish, big fish. Oh yeah, you're gonna work. It's bigger than I thought it was. Good quality fish. That's number 11 today. He's wanting to be four pounds. If he's not. Still another 20 pound sack. Today, Steve Clapper's looking a bit like Larry Nixon did back in 2001 when he took the title on Lake St. Clair. And like Steve Clapper, he'd never won a Walmart FLW Tour title before. His victory is the subject of today's Castrol flashback. Look at him winning down there. Look at him. Got him! 2001, that was a that was a great tournament. You know, I was on a lot of fish, and I had a special hole that I'd found in '99 here for the the prior FLW tournament that I should have won. I was going to throw top water because it was calm, and I got up there and I caught three good ones, and then 30 minutes went by and nothing. You know, nothing happened. Knew I was around a bunch of them because when I'd catch one, a lot of them would follow it to the boat. So I switched to a Berkeley Jerk Shed, and boy did I weigh like them. Oh golly! I mean, I called them, and I called them. I had more fun for about an hour there than you can imagine. Good. Look at that toad. That'll call something. I kind of felt like I had it won when I when I caught the last big one that gave me up over 18 pounds. But you never know till it's over. Three pounds, seven ounces. The title goes to Larry Nixon. That was my first FLW title was on St. Clair. Long way, long way. I'd been to the FLW championship several times, but to get the first FLW win, that was, that was exciting. How about our champion here, Larry Nixon? But to add insult to entry, not everyone is having a great day today, Charlie. Cliff Perch is still looking for his first keeper. A few minutes ago, he came close, only to be disappointed. We really need this one to be that. It would be encouraging. Oh, yeah. Instead, it's discouraging because it just came off. He's not having a good day. I guess if they're just not here, they're not here. Get ready to move out. Got one here. Oh, it's going to the surface. Oh my gosh. It's a bass. Can you believe it? I bet that whole school was bass. Spotted him on the depth fighter. Didn't think it was bass, but it apparently is. Maybe his day's gonna turn around. Don't leave now. That's the key, though, isn't it, Charlie? Absolutely. Electronics are in here. They're spotting the base. Oh, he's gonna jump out there. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, we got a jumper. A jumper? That's an Olympic athlete. <laughs> that that clears six foot easy. These things, I'll tell you what, they are tough. Letting out that light line. Back in the other drag. This is a strong fish. I'm jump on the other side of the boat. Let that rod tip fight the it's fish. It's not like it's any world record or anything. Oh, that's a good one, though. How about that one? Finally put one in the boat. Maybe that'll get him started. Oh, I needed a good pick me up. That was a long stretch there. In his voice. Mm. Did a great job qualifying for the top 10. Decent day yesterday, but man, what a tough day so far today. Again, maybe this will get his day started right. Back over to Kevin Long, who's been pulling him in hand over fist. He has caught 15 keepers so far today. He'll only bring his best five to the weigh in, but he's got five good ones in the live well so far and having fun. Chomp, dude. <laughs> jerk stick, man. 
<laughs> That's pretty cool right there. And he's been catching nice fish on St. Clair here. Got him right under the boat. Got one? Yep, good one. Good one? Yep, it was just dragging behind the boat. I don't know if they'll call or not. He might call. Yeah, we talked about the big smallmouth being caught on Erie, but he's proven that he can catch his huge smallmouth on St. Clair. Tough problem to have. You don't know if it'll call and you know it's a nice fish. Good things through his eyes through the cap cam. I mean, he's a slob, dude. <laughs> Guess he likes it. That's a slob. Over four pounds. <laughs> Beautiful fish, man. This is going to be a joke right here. They're all about the same size. <laughs> Put them on the bar. Balance beam them. It's the only way you can tell the difference is one bigger than the other. Hi, I'm Kevin Long. Stick around. You don't want to miss what's coming next. regular season event of the year and an opportunity to hand out a new award. This one rewarded not fishing, but fitness. It was spearheaded by fitness trainer, daytime TV star, and co-angler Real Andrews. The competition was for pro anglers and their families. Unlike a fishing tournament, the goal was less weight, not more. Fish, fish on. We, as the United States of America, are undeniably the most powerful nation in the world, yet we're 37th in health. The Angler Spouse Challenge is built around who loses the greatest percentage of body weight and the greatest amount of inches. Our lifestyle is, you know, you eat bad food, you don't exercise. I mean, the most exercise you get is walking from the driver's seat to the trolling motor, you know what I mean? You know, you just gotta get your priorities straight. We're fishing against so many good guys right now, you have to, you know, have every advantage you can. So staying in good shape, working out, eating right, and, and taking care of yourself is super important. It makes a big difference. Whoever loses the greatest percentage of body weight is going to get $1,000. Well, it'd be nice to win. You can always use 1000 bucks, but, you know, I'm, I'm healthier than I was. That's what it's all about. In first place, from Team Castro, we have Daryl Stevens. He lost a total of 21 pounds. That is phenomenal. Congratulations, Daryl Stevens, and thank you, Real, for that great program. Here's Chris King. He had the toughest day of anyone in the top 10 yesterday, and he's trying to make up for it today. Yesterday, we had high winds that resulted in some huge big waves, lots of water. Chris King didn't allow enough time to make it back in, didn't get back to check in on time. He was disqualified. You could have had a 35-pound sack. If you don't get back in time, that goes to zero, and that's exactly what he's working with now. But He's catching them today. He already has three in the live well. This may be number four. Hooked up again. This is his first ever Walmart FLW Tour Tournament. And just making the top 10 is quite an accomplishment. Another one of those anglers that really knows this body of water. King has four previous top 10s in the Walmart BFL and the Strand Series events, all of them right here on Lake Erie. Every fish will count. You saw that Cliff Perch was struggling. He only had one in the live well. If he catches five big fish, it might be a $1,000 difference in the standings. If he gets this within the net. All right, finally. So the fourth keeper for King. One more and he'll have his limit. Big deal. But Charlie, we're seeing guys catch 15, 16, 17 bass. He, he doesn't have quite the numbers that the other guys have. Is that why he's not catching the big ones right now? I think you're right. There's lots of fish here. There's no doubt about it. This is world-class smallmouth fishing. But catching numbers is not the key. It's yeah. catching big ones. And you got to go through enough fish during the day to call out and get five big monsters to get you over the 20-pound mark to have you a shot. And now here's Shad Skake, who, get this, 21 keepers so far today, and he's still going strong. Feels pretty good. Pulling pretty hard. Definitely a smallmouth. We got the head shake. A big, strong smallmouth. What a day he's having, Robbie. You and I ought to be able to fish like this. I wish. Use the main cutter to go this way just a little bit. He's taking his time, too. 
I'd be power fishing if I caught 21. <laughs> you gotta take your time though with that light line. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. Woo, look at this one. Look at this one. He knows he's oh, gonna have it. Look at that one. Look at it. Woo! <laughs> Can you believe that? He knew it was gonna help. Are we gonna give him a run for the money today or not? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Is this exciting or what? We're having fun now. It is exciting. <sighs> oh my god. Good times for Shansky. I can't believe it. 22 keepers so far today, and every single one of them coming on a new bait from Berkeley called a gulp leech. Fishing on 10 pound, four carbon line. That's super sensitive where you can feel every bite. Charlie, he's culling, and look at the fish he's culling. Those are some nice keepers right there, but back in the water. That is a huge fish he's letting go. That means he's got five in the live well that are much bigger than that. What a day he's having. You can only bring your best five to the scales, but he's going to have a huge five bat stringer. Hey, Charlie, go get my reel. I'm with you. <laughs> that is awesome. Hi, I'm Shad Skank. Don't go anywhere. The bass are biting big time on Lake Erie. The fishing has been fast and furious today. Now time is running out, and these pros can feel the pressure building. But what incredible catches we've been seeing. Josh Myers found his own sweet spot today. And what a sweet spot it was. There's keeper number eight. Beautiful fish, there's number nine. Here comes number 10. And just behind it, number 11. 11 keepers so far today. And he's hooked up, oh, oh. I thought he was hung up, but he's hooked up again. Yeah, he's hung up in another fish's mouth. Oh. I'm starting to get smallmouth fever, Charlie. Robbie, we knew that when the wind died, they were going to catch more fish, but this has been a slugfest. They are murdering them out there. What a day. Much clearer water today than we saw yesterday as well. You can you see, see those big, huge smallmouth way down below the boat. Must be some grass there as well. He's been ripping them through that grass. It's now up there at the top. Yes! Got it. Yes! That one's over four pounds, too. That's what I'm talking about. Started the day six pounds behind Steve Clapper. That's a good fish. That's a good one. It's not totally out of the question. <sighs> Stick with the plan. Things will pan out. A great game plan. Jerry Baxay has also been on them this afternoon. There's one. Come on, be a right one. He needs a heavyweight here. You're long enough, are you fat? He's caught 15 keepers. This will be number 16. But they've all been about the three and a half pound range. In a tournament, you normally love to have a live well hold three and a half. But in this event, Terry Baxay is going back. Gosh, are you a long fish? Oh my God! Don't you do that again! I hope you got that on film. <laughs> that was awesome! We got all of it, Terry. <laughs> oh my God! Did you see that jump? Sure did. I've seen it other times from other anglers. Told you we we're fishing for sailfish. <laughs> that smallmouth was scooting across the top <gasps> of the water. Terry puts his fish in the live well, and some of the guys packing up, heading out. Turn this is one of the most amazing days I've ever seen. Not just an amazing day, Robbie. It's been an amazing week. This tournament's been just awesome. The tough weather yesterday, they still caught fish, and today, a slugfest. I tell you, I'm moving to Detroit. While well, the top 10 head in, the other two pros are meeting fans at the Family Fun Zone at the Cobo Center. And that's where we asked the pros how old they were when they caught their first bass. In this edition of Ask the Angler, presented by Folgers. I caught my first bass about 10 minutes after I was born. You know, I was born in a fishing family, and they wanted to teach me pretty quick. I caught my first bass when I was five years old, bluegill fishing with my grandfather. I caught my first bass uh, yesterday. That'd make me 33. I caught my first bass when I was 16 years old on a chug bug in New Caledonia. I'm safe. 8 years old. 
18 months, and uh, I think it was longer than I was. I caught my first bass when I was 10 years old, and it was big, really big. I caught my first bass when I was four years old. It was a giant. I caught my first bass when I was four with my dad, and I swear to you, it was this big. I can't remember when I caught my first bass because my dad would catch them all so I could go home and tell my mom that I caught them. When I caught my first bass, I was four years old and I was hooked ever since. I caught my first bass when I was 10 years old. I was six years old. I was four years old. I was four years old. I was his age. Now, Stewart's a lifelong passion for these pros and winning $200,000 just for pursuing their passion would be a dream come true. The question is, can anyone beat Steve Clapper? Somebody's going to have to have caught him good to beat me, but that's very possible. There's uh, on either one of these lakes, uh, it's very possible to, to catch a 25-pound stringer. Kevin Long had a great day, but maybe not great enough to close the gap. Made a few good adjustments when it got slick. We caught some big ones on jerk bait, like I thought might happen, and. Uh, feel pretty good, you know. I mean, that's everything I could possibly catch. I might have lost one good one, but I think I would have called him later, so uh, you really can't complain. All 10 of these pros gave it their all today, and if they missed an opportunity, they can be proud just to have made it this far. They know that only one of them can go all the way. For the moment, they can sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride to the arena in the Chevy truck and Ranger boat procession. Ranger boats with their big outboards are quite a sight cruising down the streets of the Motor City behind their Chevy trucks. At the end of the line, each angler carefully transfers his catch from the live well and into the arena. Downtown Detroit, Michigan. In the Cobo Center, you can feel the excitement. The fans are in their seats. Charlie Evans is on stage, and the final weigh-in of the Chevy Open is underway. Ten anglers take the stage, one champion will leave it. Chris King has an impressive limit today, but with yesterday's zero, it's not enough to keep him in contention. Kellogg's pro Clark Willett played it safe on Lake St. Clair, but he wasn't able to hook up with the big bass. His two-day total is 28 pounds, six ounces. Chad Skank had an incredible day today in a monster catch this afternoon. It's time to see if it pays off. Look at this. A pair of five bass limit for a and Pro. Five fish, total weight here. 22 pounds, six ounces. A new leader, Chad Skank. A huge sack with Chad Skank in the hot seat. And the fans are getting a taste of the big Lake Erie smallmouth. Chad Skank knows that the big ones could still be yet to come. And Steve Clapper has been weighing them in all week long. A win here would make history. Welcome back to the Cobo Center here in Detroit, Michigan. We've seen three anglers come to the scale so far. Now it's Clifford Purchase's turn. He headed in early on day three with just four fish. Today, he has just one. Josh Myers landed nearly 18 and a half pounds today, but his two-day total is not enough to take the lead from Chad Skank. Trevor Jenkins doesn't have enough either. He made the lead to the pro side for this event, but the champion co-angler will have to wait a little bit longer for his first pro title. Kevin Long has studied Lake St. Clair for 10 years as a fishing guide, trying to put his clients on the big bass. But when the pressure was on, was he able to put himself on a $200,000 stringer? He got on him early today with a limit that let him pull up all morning. By noon, his live well was full of trophy-sized bass. The question is, does he have enough to make up the nearly four and a half pound deficit that he carries into this final day? And he has a five fish limit. We'll need 19 pounds, 11 ounces. Five fish here, and the weight, 20 pounds, 10 ounces, the new leader, Kevin Long. Kevin Long 
puts his local knowledge to good use, and his wife, a former co-angler herself, is on the edge of her seat. Thomas Molesky comes close, but misses the mark by six ounces. With him out of the race, Kevin Long moves one step closer to victory. Terry Baxay also has a close call, just five ounces shy of Kevin Long. But in the end, he too is sent to the showers. You can feel the energy building in this arena. Kevin Long is still hanging on. Just one hurdle remains, and it's a big one. Steve Clapper. He's been in this game a long time. Now he's this close to his greatest victory. The Chevy Open on FLW Outdoors is brought to you by BF Goodrich, the world's toughest off-road tires. Berkeley in the zone. Tylenol Extra Strength Rapid Release Gels. Rapid Release, Rapid Relief. Yamaha, reliability starts here. PTSI, experience the lure of the open road, drive for PTSI. And by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. The fans going wild here in Detroit, Michigan, as Kevin Long battled his way from fifth place into the leader's chair. Just one man is left to weigh in. No one has ever led a Walmart FLW Tour event from wire to wire. But no Walmart FLW Tour event has ever seen the likes of Steve Clamper. Today, he can make history. The big water pioneer proved that after decades on the water, he still got what it takes to run with the best of them. He barely blinked at the worst conditions we've ever seen on tour, and it seemed that nothing could throw him off his game. He hasn't just led this event, he dominated it. Three so far, again, less, right at 13 pounds you need. 16.5, do you have any more in the National Guard leader bag here? I, I must have forgot some. Oh, okay. No more in the National Guard leader bag, he said. You forgot some? I, I think, can I go back? Back to the Chevy boat he goes. This could be trouble, Kevin. He's got him. That's the way to seal the deal. So let's make it official. Two more huge smallmouth. Let's see number five. In his first top 10, Walmart FLW Tour leading from wire to wire. Fishing out of the Chevy boat today. Steve Clapper from Lamo Ohio has five fish that weigh a total of 22 pounds, six ounces. Our champion, Steve Clapper. From a three pound lead to a six pound win, Steve Clapper takes the cake. $150,000 plus the $50,000 Ranger boat bonus. His first ever Walmart FLW Tour victory has him $200,000 richer. And look at the move by Kevin Long. Second place nets him $75,000. Steve shows off that $200,000 check being presented by Chevrolet's John Ring in his first ever Walmart FLW Tour event. After all his years in this sport, Steve Clamper sets a record and shows that no one can touch him on Lake Erie. Join us next time for the Forest Wood Cup from Hot Springs, Arkansas. The best of the best battle it out for a historic $1 million top prize. And log on to FLWoutdoors.com for complete tournament coverage and live webcast. For more fishing action, call 866-567-1960 to subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine. For Charlie Evans, I'm Robbie Floyd. We'll see you next week here on FLW Outdoors.